terrestrial insects make up a large portion of a fish's diet, and one of the first terrestrial insects of the season to hatch are flying black ants. You will find these large insects flying around lakes and rivers from early May up until early July, and when they fall into the water, it can make for some very exciting dry fly fishing. Dwayne D'Andrea of Mountain Valley Sport Fishing and Tours is guiding us on the Columbia River in the West Kootenai region of British Columbia. Drifting the Columbia using flying black ant patterns, that's today on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice fish. Yeah. Oh, nice fish. Yeah. Let's take a look at him real close. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> dandy. He's big. <laughs> All right. Okay, on the reel. On the Where he belongs. There you go. Very nice. Right on. Oh, the black ants. Well, that's what the whole show is about today. We're doing the black ants on the Columbia River, and we just got out here. Yeah, we did. Took a few casts, and you popped this guy right away. Yeah, nice Beautiful. fish too. Well, we're with Dwayne D'Andrea from Mountain Valley Sports Fishing and Tours. Got us out here in the Columbia River with uh, his own pattern too. Had the had the chance <laughs> to use the local knowledge fly, and that's I jumped at the opportunity. Right on. Well, and also later in the show we will go to the bench, and obviously, oh, that's a nice one. We are we are doing the black ant, so we will tie you up a real good black ant pattern. Look at that. <laughs> oh, and there he goes. These Columbia River Rainbow are absolutely a beautiful fish, phenomenal fish. They just are oh, our favorite for sure. They I mean, are our favorite. Pound for pound, <laughs> next to a bonefish. One of the best. And well, that's a beauty. Well, that's a, that's a nice Columbia Rainbow. Well, that's what makes it so tough in this river, as you, you can see. This is actually a back eddy, and that's where you fish in the Columbia's in these back eddies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Bring them over there. Right that's on. a dandy. Whew. Oh, <laughs> Check that out. I'll stay on this side. Here, Grant, here, Granny, I'll take your rod. All you right. guys can release it. Wow. Oh. <laughs> what a beauty. I just love the looks of the rainbows here in the Columbia River. Fantastic. They are so pretty. Yeah. A black ant, the special black ant. Black I ant. He wanted my rod there. He wants a black ant. Yeah, I'm gonna have a look I'm at it. I'm gonna release it here pretty quick. Okay. Up there for a oh, oh yeah, oh, look at that. that, that he guy. is long. He's really long. Looks like he's just out of spawn. Yeah, he's ago, eh? just starting to fatten but up. He's just starting to fatten up. Yeah. He's gonna be a bigger fish. Whoa. There he goes. There he goes. Got a little yeah. shower in. <laughs> well, one slipped right on. Wow. Great right start. Thanks, Dwayne. Way to go. Quick you start. That's more excellent. To go. Yeah. Now, do you know anything about the rainbow in here? Like, is there a certain type? I know when we were talking about all the Columbia River rainbow. Yeah. They got a bunch of ones that are stocking down the states, Lake Roosevelt. They've got the steelhead from way back. They got some camelus rainbow. They That's got a right. Whole bunch of strings. That's don't exactly they? true. Uh, what you say? There is some native trout still left. Yeah. But the numbers aren't aren't that great. So uh, that looked uh, hey, catch nice. a fish that size. That's great. Yeah. Stay tuned. For sure. We're gonna be right back with some more black ants on the Columbia. Yeah, give me my black <laughs> No way! No way! It's mine now. <laughs> What we should do now, we're back, is uh, talk a little bit about how we're fishing here. Because it's sure. a little different than the normal dry fly fishing. You're not casting and mending and casting to boil. It's a little different. Exactly. Yeah, right now you're fishing uh, with the dry line and eight to a 10 foot leader with a black ant. And you're fishing the seams. That's where the fish are uh, picking up the food that drifts by them lazily in the curt as it comes around. And if your fly is in the right spot, 
you're gonna get one. What we're doing is we're just we're casting out. We're looking for a good. Will you say a seam? And a seam is explain a seam. Well, a seam is like a river within a river. It's uh, something that is a branch of the main column, okay. water column, and it's like a little brook, for an example. It's a little run of water that's carrying food. It, where it's where a back eddy meets uh, the main current. Okay. So you want to fish those seams. Ooh, my fly was right in the seam, but there's seams, yet. seams all around us. So what we're doing is getting our fly there and then we're just letting it sit. Sometimes we're, we're giving a little bit of motion, but we're doing lots of mending just to try and keep the, the fly yeah, close in that seam. Yeah, and a nice dead drift is good too. So what I did there is I cast it out, actually cast my line here, mended and just kept stripping out line. Just kept feeding out, feeding out. And I probably got most of my fly line out and just feed it out and get into that main seam. And that's where you got that big guy. That's where the big guy went, <laughs> yeah. And yet the fishing, uh, I mean, the Columbia River is notorious for being the night fishery. Usually you don't even get into a few fish until, you know, sun goes down a bit, right. fish start rising, but uh, we've got some early. Well, the sun's about to go down. That's a good sign. <laughs> Oh, another dandy on right on. Oh, man. Hammered it. And again, what we're doing is getting a little later now. It's about 8.30. Oh, and he did, oh, look at him digging for the bottom. Getting that fly right out in the seam again. Just letting it sit and skid a bit in the current. And he came right up yeah. and popped it. This guy's right. Look at this. This is a six-weight rod. You know what we should go oh, through right now? Down. is a recommended setup. Oh, yeah, good idea. I mean, today I'm using a six-weight rod. I've got my six-weight real wing, wind uh, cutter line. Whoa, man, with it. He's just shaking down there. He's Sweet. a nice size. Oh, oh yeah. And we're, we're using, I've got 12 feet of tippet on here, a 12, feet, 12 foot leader. Oh man, he's dancing down there. Where's that anchor rope? It's back here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it should back. be okay where he's out there. About 12 feet of leader and I've got some nice, some nice fluorocarbon tippet on here. I've got about, uh, take a run yet. oh jeez. Oh man, look at him shaking down there. Yeah, and just a couple of feet of that uh, fluorocarbon tippet. And I swear by the fluorocarbon, I mean, it gives you a bang for your buck. Some people complain that it sinks your fly, but I swear by it, I like that fluorocarbon. Well, I mean, that's the type of fishing we're doing yeah. today. We're actually going through dry and then letting it swing through swing wet. We saw a few rising, which was nice. You know, we saw the fish, a few moving out there. We had a, a slow time. We had it going at about, what did we get out here? Six o'clock, 6.30? Yeah, 6 about six, yeah. Cranking pretty good. And I got slow for about an hour. We kind of sat around. We let Dwayne fish. <laughs> That's the Fishing benefit of a bad. guide, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Fishing work. gets bad. You let the guide fish. And then it started cranking again, so we got going. Oh, that's a healthy fish. Oh, man. So, again, recommend a setup. Minimum six-way rod, I think, out here. What do you guys think? Yeah, six. Six is probably yeah, pretty five. good. Five is good. Oh, gee. But in this current, like, we're, we, and I got about, uh, I think, four X tip it on here which is still pretty fine oh there he is there oh a nice him. healthy silver okay well you know what i think he's ready yeah okay he's ready for the netting i like these nets too these are awesome oh yeah. easy on the fish oh hold on so i'm gonna here for you let Dwayne do the honors which black ant do you have on there i've got on Dwayne special and tied and you know what we're gonna do right after this fish i think we'll go to the bench and tie it up, because this is a really neat point. <laughs> it is, an excellent pattern. All right, there it is there. Got that, I will show everybody the fish. I will show everybody the ant pattern. Oh, isn't that a beauty? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, aren't they gorgeous colors? Beautiful. Just gorgeous. Columbia River rainbow, it's best. They got the dark gun, there he goes. Oh, they're so tough to fit. All right, all right. <laughs> Good job. Excellent. Well, you know what we're gonna do right now? Yes, that was a nice fish. We've got your special pattern. Yeah. We'll go to the bench and tie up that real special black hat. What, you got a name for it? Black hat. Black hat. fine tuned a little <laughs> There bit. you go, flying black hat. Fine tuned. Hi everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well, today we're gonna tie you up the flying black hat. Now, of course, the whole show was based on flying black hats, but this pattern works exceptionally well in the springtime on the Columbia when the black hats are flying. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We're going to tie the ant on a Mustad R74 size 10 streamer hook. We'll use some UTC 70 black thread. For the body, we'll use some black deer hair. 
We'll use some brown hackle tips for the wings, some black hackle as the hackle, and some peacock curl for the head. The first stage is to make sure you build up a nice layer or foundation of black thread. You don't want that deer hair slipping on the hook at all, so build up a real nice layer of black thread on the hook first. I've taken a small clump of my black deer hair, and I'm going to put this on the back of the hook, and I'm going to tie in probably about an eighth of an inch of the black deer hair, just to get a nice base built up, and wrap the thread right to the, right to the bend of the hook. Bring your thread back forward, again about a quarter of an inch. Now what we're going to do is take all this deer hair and bring it forward to form the first segment of our fly of the ant, the very back segment of the ant. We're going to pull it all forward, take our thread and wrap over the first segment. We'll now push our hair back, bring our thread forward about an eighth of an inch, bring our deer hair all forward again, pull it into another bunch, and this is going to form the second segment of the fly of the ant. So we'll tie off over that. And I also like to just push this back a little bit, just to bulge the second segment, just so you can get a nice little bulge on the fly. And we'll cut off all our excess hair. The reason I push that deer hair back for the second bulge is because we're going to tie in a couple of brown hackle tips as the wings. And when I tie these in, that little bulge of deer hair will help the wings actually stay out. We don't want them too close to the body, we want them actually flared out. So we'll take our brown wing tip, brown hackle tip, and tie it in. Tie one on one side, and cut up our excess, and we'll tie another on the other side. Now that I've tied in the two hackle tips forward, and this is an important note, is I have tied them forward. When I pull them back now, I'm going to pull them back to form the wings, and when I tie them back over with the thread, these wings will now stay outright. We'll now take one black hackle, I've taken a nice dry grade one neck hackle, and we're going to tie it in just above the wings in front. Cut off our excess. And then we'll take some hackle pliers and form some legs. And now when we do wrap the hackle in, we only want a few legs on there, so I only tend to take three to four wraps at the most. So that's three, there's four wraps, and then tie off. To tie in the head now, I've taken two strands of peacock curl. We're going to tie them in just behind the eyelet. Wrap back to where you had the hackle put in. Bring your thread forward and then slowly wind in the last segment of the fly, which will be the head. And I like to make a little bit bigger head just to make it stand out a little bit. And there it is, the finished flying black ant. You know, this pattern works fantastic when the flying black ants are out, but it isn't that durable because of the black deer hair. You catch a couple of fish, it gets chewed up very easily. If you want to make it more durable, apply a little bit of flex cement or even some hard head finish onto the black deer hair. If you don't do that, make sure you have plenty in your fly box. Oh, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think he's that small. I don't think he's that small, Granny, he wasn't is he? that small, but he's gone now. <laughs> oh, he got off? He just got off. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, wow. Well, you can see how dark it's getting right now. and uh, Well, they're still coming up. Actually, they're coming up oh, bigger yeah. and bigger. They're coming. Hey, the black ant is working dead. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Late night. Late night on the Columbia River. All right, Dwayne. A nice one. Tangle up there a little bit. Oh, it looks nice though. Looks like a good fish. Well, I'm still tying on from the last one so you can see that uh, oh, it is coming on big time. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a nice one. I'll do the I'll do the guide thing. Okay. And net them for you. Let's put my rod down here. Now well, you can see these. Yeah, it's a Boy. Yeah, that's that's the thing though. You got to be out here late at night. For these rise, these rainbows don't come up. I mean, some do come up in the day. You are gonna get a few a little later on in the afternoon, but where it really starts cranking when they start boiling is late at night. <coughs> oh yeah, that's a beauty. Whoa, no, he's not ready yet. That was pretty quick. For 
fish that big to come in. <laughs> yeah. No kid. All right. There he is there. Oh, that's another candy. Yeah. We should let everybody know, Dwayne, is if somebody wanted to do this, yeah. black ant fishing like this, when when is the best time? I mean, I like, every year is different, but. Yeah, you can't go wrong from uh, end of May right into, right into July. I really like June. June's my, one of my favorite times. Fish Probably the best thing to do is give you a call to find out how things are going. Yeah. To, to know yeah. when the best time to well, come out is. Don't mind talking fishing at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's something uh, pretty normal with guys, isn't it? They, they like oh, yeah. to talk. Come here. So how big is that guy? Oh, it's like uh, 18 inches or so? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dandy. Yeah, that's a beauty. There he goes. And he's gone. Thank you. <laughs> and actually, uh, you're in good. at a good time. There's actually fish rising, you're able to fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was great. Well, we're trying it all. Why not? So, hey, catches. It's still going. I mean, there's still fish rising. I'm going to hand off your rod and I'm going to get back out there. Okay. I see Granny's back on. I'm in. Okay. All right. <laughs> wow. Oh, gee, and he went right for the bottom, got him right on top again. You know what, I saw him, I could hear him boiling out there. And I cast out there, saw a couple of circles around where I thought it was. Yeah. Pulled my fly a couple of times, and then I saw another boil, and then I felt him. Nice. <laughs> and he was on my fly. That is amazing. Get her. Oh, he's right there. We're right over there. Whoa. Get it right. Whoa, he's right there. Whoa. My rods are right Yeah, he wants to go again. Whoa. <laughs> Is this Columbia River action or oh. what? It's worth the week. Oh, I tell you. We're getting him in finally. Get her again. Oh. I, had to, I had to chase him a little bit. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Still running. You know what? When they get in that current, you do. You have to chase them around. And that's the nice thing about being in, out in the hide. Drift boat. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You know, our, our big boat is pretty tough to up anchor and chase them. You gotta, you gotta get them in. Yeah. You know what? I gotta come to the back of the boat or I'm gonna get in big trouble here. You're gonna be trouble here. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Camera boat comes in handy. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta fish it. Well, I'm afraid you might have to join me. <laughs> okay, I'm coming. Just because we could have got all really hooked up and stuff. And... Oh, switching venues here. Hopping the harbor craft out of the hide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Oh, it is. That is hilarious. Oh, nice oh. fish. Why? You said that wasn't that big of a fish? Well, you never you know. Lied. <laughs> I lied, yeah. Oh, just when they hit, you know, they just boil and... Look at that. What a wow. gorgeous fish. Is that ever... Oh. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's big. That is a beauty. Okay. Oh, wait, I'll give you that. Oh, we'll hang on to the net. You can, okay. You can do it. Great. I'll just get my hands wet. That wiper. is a big fish. That's a nice fish. That's a beautiful rainbow. Boy, oh boy. Okay, settle down here. He just wants to go. Let's see, yeah, see we'll we get a good to... look at this. Yeah. yeah. Because this is gorgeous. This is why we love the Columbia so much. Oh. Because we get fish like that. There he wow. is. What a beauty. It's <laughs> not a nice fish. They're so pretty. I just love the stripe on them. Yeah, they, and, and the spots are just that much different. The red, the, the real red gills. Gill and this there. is your average size. That is the average size fish you're going to catch out here. They get way bigger. Oh, they get a lot bigger than this. Well, let's let them go. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at the back on them too. It's just a beautiful back. Ah, he's got teeth on him too. I don't know. He's going to need some reviving. He gave us a, a great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a great fish. <laughs> it is, and that's what the Columbia's all about. Oh, wow. And, you know, just fishing with black ants, it's what a great thing to do, too. I mean, it's something we bypass. We always fish with caddis whenever we come out to the Columbia. We bypass the black ants, but we won't anymore. Not a chance. And the caddis haven't really come off yet this year. Not right. big. And the black ants have. They're later on in the year. We happen to hit it. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Well, let's go back in the drift boat with Dwayne. He's sitting right here. We'll hop back in. <laughs> Well, Dwayne, thank you very much for bringing us out today. My pleasure. And tonight, because it's been a blast. Yeah. Fishing late at night is always a lot of fun. We're lucky we got the camera boat along. We got the lights. <laughs> Good thing we had the camera boat for that fish you got. Oh, had to jump no in. kidding. I had to jump in. It was a lot of fun fishing yeah, black great. ants. Hope everybody pleasure. learned a lot about fishing with black ants. They're going to maybe give you a call and come out and give it a try. Yeah, it'd be great.
Well, the I neat thing on the that. black cats too that I really enjoy is you can get you can fish them dry and you can fish them wet, and you're not limited. There, you're uh, you're unlimited. You can put them on a sink tip line, get them down deep, or fish them right on top like we we're doing. Yeah, exactly. fantastic way to fish. You come to the Columbia, you get the nice big fish. When you do. Give Dwayne a call, he'll take you out here, show you a great time. We'll make sure you take care. And conservative waters, Columbia River, world-class fishing. It's unreal. It yeah. is. See you next time. Well, we take you sport fishing on the fly. <laughs>